In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish a paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright his fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness 
to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word that as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. We have um, 
in today's liturgy, this, the fifth Sunday of Easter, uh, first of all, from the Acts of the Apostles, which describes the institution of the, of the permanent diaconate, the order of deacons, on the part of the apostles. And um, so this is not a priestly ministry, it is a ministry of service. And it came out of the circumstance in which you had the church growing, you had Jewish people, but you also had people who were non-Jews, the Hellenists. These were people of Greek language and culture background. And with the bringing together of people of different backgrounds and language groups and cultures, there were going to be rubs. That just happens. And um, the apostles find themselves being pulled in different directions and distracted from what is essential to their ministry. That is, being sent to proclaim the gospel, to speak the kerygma, to, to tell the story of Jesus so that people can come to faith in him and uh, uh, make their commitment to live life uh, as disciples of the Lord with the promise of everlasting life if they keep his commandments and love him. And, uh, and so uh, they pray and discern and um, they instruct the people to, to present seven from among their number uh, who are showing the gifts and the, the, the zeal, the enthusiasm, and they pray and lay hands on them, which is a very brief description of what happens in the rite of, of ordination. Uh, there's a prayer of consecration and the laying on of hands. And uh, then they were able to have the diaconal order, which is a ministry of service and of charity, um, uh, of administering the material goods of the church for building up the body of Christ, for building up the church and enabling the church to carry out her mission so that then the, uh, the apostles and their successors would be able to be uh, freed to continue to proclaim Jesus Christ. And so, um, this was very, very important. We also have, in the second reading from St. Peter, his first reading, his first letter, um, he presents a beautiful theology of Jesus Christ, um, uh, who is the living stone, who is the cornerstone, if you will. Um, and he is uh, the cornerstone uh, in, in Spanish is piedra angular, the angular stone. In other words, a stone that is cut on a perfect square angle. And it is precisely on that then that the building gets its structural integrity of being square and being uh, well built and rightly ordered. Uh, and so Jesus Christ is that living stone um, and the, the cornerstone and then all the rest of the stones, he says, come to him, a living stone rejected by humans but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, so to conform oneself to him, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And then he quotes scripture. For I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, it's value for you who have faith. Uh, but for those without faith, the stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They, dis they stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. And the notion of destiny here is not that somehow God arbitrarily chose people to be damned. That's not the idea. 
but God who is in the eternal present, who foreknows all of salvation history from beginning to end, already knows those who will elect to be faithful to him and those who will reject him. And so there is a consequence that flows from using freedom rightly in accord with God's plan and calling and those who use freedom wrongly against God's plan and the high calling. But speaking to the Christian community, he says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. As we reflect upon the gospel and we, lead, we, we hear these words that the Holy Spirit inspired St. John to report and to bring out the theological and spiritual meaning here, we see that the Lord has been preparing the apostles for what he's going to be going through in terms of his upcoming passion and death and resurrection, and they're troubled. They don't know what to think of it. It goes against their plans for him because they are thinking in a worldly way. They're not, uni they're not privy to the Father's plan. It is the Lord Jesus who is in perfect communion with his Father and their spirit. He has, he embodies, he enfleshes, he incarnates the will of God and the divine wisdom in the world. He is a scandal to the world. And he is continually challenging the apostles and broadening their perspective, stretching them, breaking them down from the standpoint of the limits that they have placed on God and opening their eyes and their hearts and their minds to be able to be prepared for whatever it is that God has in store. But they struggle. They struggle. And so... We have Thomas saying to the Lord, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And then we have Philip who says, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. They're looking for easy answers. They're looking to be able to have the fruits of the kingdom without the cross. They don't want to struggle. Who of us does? But the Lord calls us to throw in our lot with him and to go against what the reason of this world calls us to and holds up as high and the goals and the value of what's really important in life. The Lord is, is changing all of that. And he's doing so by speaking of his communion with the Father and calling us into that communion, a privileged place, but a place that we cannot go into with all of our baggage. If we're putting prerequisites on God, then we may not enter. We have to be willing to let go of whatever it is that we're holding on to so as to be free, to be filled with that which is so much greater, infinitely greater, in the goods that the Lord wants to bestow upon us. Let us remember, friends, he calls us into struggle. He challenges us. He chastises and chastens us. But it was, is all with a view to fulfilling his plan of love for us. He wants to make all of us saints. He wants to make all of us, as St. Peter says, living stones being built up in the edifice of spirit to the praise and glory of Almighty God, to be a priestly people, to be a people who offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. It's not that we have anything that's all that we have nothing that God is envious of or particularly desires. God is completely fulfilled within himself in his Trinitarian life. 
His motives are only for us. His motives are only to bless us. His motives are only to enrich us with the things of the heavenly kingdom. And we have to have the sense in mind and heart to see the seductions of the devil for what they are, who wants to seduce us into those things of material concern or things of flattery or things of pride or things of lust or things of greed, and you go down the list. And if we reflect on life, we reflect on, on the struggles we faced in life, we reflect on the things that happen in the world around us, we can see all of that at work in a big, big way. But it comes down, my friends, to letting go of the demand uh, for Jesus uh, to make it easy for us uh, in the sense that, you know, uh, quick and simple answers, a flash in the pan kind of a uh, card trick sort of miracles that we want him to do, especially for me. It's as if, you know, it's as if everything that he did before really doesn't matter and it doesn't have any credibility to us because now I'm here in this situation and I don't see it and I want to see it, but I want God to make it easy for me. And that would be the very worst thing that God would do for us is to make it easy. He wants to stretch us and grow us and increase our capacity for faith, for hope, for love. And that means that we have to seize upon the opportunity to enter into the living relationship of trust with the Lord. We can't rely on what previous generations have said and done in that sense. We cannot rely upon what the uh, uh, society is doing and what's trendy. We can't rely even on what's going on in church circles uh, totally because we see so many cross currents and conflicting messages and errors being promoted in our day. We have to, of course, with obedience to the legitimate authority that the Lord has established. And the, the um, sacramental economy that the Lord established and the one church that the Lord established. Of course, that's a given. But with all of that, we still have to enter into that living relationship. And we have to do our wrestling so as to grow and to mature and to be strengthened. And it is in this that the Lord... Uh, uh, gives us uh, this exhortation. It isn't because we feel comfort in a given moment. That isn't necessarily f faith. It's just feelings of comfort. It's when one is uncomfortable and they choose to believe. It's when one is uncomfortable and they choose to obey. It is when one is uncomfortable and when one is sorely tested and tempted that one chooses to be faithful. This is the making of living relationship and faith. Look at marriage, for example. The marriages, all marriages get tested. It's precisely in persevering with faith and struggling to work through the growth issues and the problems and cutting loose from the baggage that finally people can be freed to give themselves more deeply into the covenantal relationship between spouses and with God. And it is precisely by persevering through those storms and those trials that come one after the next, year after year, that the relationship acquires meaning and richness and depth. And it is that increases the capacity for self-giving love. And this is the love of Jesus Christ. 
A love that's not interested in what's in it for me, but a love that burns to give of self for the good of the beloved. This is the love of God. And this is what we celebrate when we come to this altar and we witness these sacred mysteries that go so much deeper than what the vision of our eyes, our bodily eyes can see. But God enables us, if we persevere, if we pray, we sacrifice, we embrace the cross, we have faith, hope, and love, and trust in Him, then He can take us from trying to see in the darkness to giving us that spiritual insight that enables the radiance of His truth, His goodness, His providential will to shine in abundant splendor. And so, my friends, as we continue with this Holy Mass, let us uh, heed these words of the Lord. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones in these because I am going to the Father. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus is the way to the Father because he is the truth and life. Let us then bring our needs to God through him. That those who have never heard the gospel may hear it and put their faith in the word of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and the people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all who serve as deacons and those preparing to be deacons, that they may grow in the spirit of service, we pray to the Lord. That we, the people of God claims as his own, may bear witness that he alone has the authority to give and take human life, we pray to the Lord. That on this Mother's Day, all mothers may receive the Holy Spirit's wisdom, strength, and joy, we pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters in hospitals and nursing homes, and for the people who care for them, we pray to the Lord. That those in purgatory may be brought to enjoy the peace and life of the world to come, we pray to the Lord. Father, your Son has gone to prepare a place for us. May his word guide our life's journey and lead us to you forever. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Friends, uh, the ushers will not take up the collection at this time. There will be basket, there are baskets that are set out on either side of the main arch. It frames a crucifixion scene. And uh, so if you would drop your offerings there um, on your way out. Um, uh, or you can, of course, go online and do the online giving, um, which we encourage. Uh, uh, you can set it up for regular uh, giving, and then you don't have to worry about writing a check uh, every week. But it's your preference, so we appreciate your support. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours, by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heaven leap heavenly kingdom, our throne open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna, in excelsis. 
we are praying the first Eucharistic prayer. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all those, all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, and your servant, 
we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipsa her in ipsa, est tibi Deo Patri omnipotenti, in unitati spiritus sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Uh, friends, I want to, um, I don't think we really have a lot in the way of announcements, just to say that um, uh, thank you to all of those who are assisting with ushering, as well as the uh, people helping with the sanitation of the church following uh, each mass. You know, we have to sanitize the church wherever people have been sitting or, or touching uh, things. So uh, we appreciate the help of volunteers and, and um, uh, in all of these things, it would it would just not be possible for us to do it without the support of our volunteers. So thank you all so much. A uh, special word uh, of greeting and best wishes and thanks to mothers on Mother's Day. Um, I hope and pray that you have a very blessed Mother's Day, all of you who are mothers. Um, uh, please uh, stay up with, uh, if, you, if you're not on our list for the e-blast, uh, Call in or email the office. Uh, you can find the information on our parish website um, to get your email address on the list. And we want to keep everybody apprised of developments. Things could change rapidly for um, possibly loosening the restrictions and so forth. And so that would mean that there would be modifications. So we appreciate uh, having your email addresses so that we can keep you up to date with things going on in the parish. We have our Masses tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m., uh, Ordinary Form English, um, uh, and, and then uh, 11.30, the Tridentine Mass, the Extraordinary Form. Um, and then tomorrow evening, we will have chanted Vespers in the Extraordinary Form, it's, and it's open to the public. No matter what the liturgy, whether it be a weekday Mass, Monday through Friday at 12.10, or Tuesday through Friday, uh, Vespers in the Ordinary Form, uh, or Sunday Masses, Saturday Masses, uh, Sunday evening uh, on the second Sunday of the month, the Chanted Vespers, please go to our website and um, get tickets so that we can have a reasonable estimate of how many people to expect and how to prepare. That's really important because we are under the restrictions of not being able to um, open up all the seats of the church yet. And I don't want, you know, a lot of our prisoners come from far away, so I don't want uh, people to have having driven a long distance and have to be turned away at the door. Um, that would be heartbreaking. Uh, and so we, we can avoid that if we just use the means uh, via the internet of uh, uh, securing those tickets. So with, with that, I'd, I'd like, before the final blessing and the dismissal, I'd like to impart a blessing upon all mothers. So if mo everyone sit down except the mothers, and you can be mothers in the order of the flesh. You can also be spiritual mothers, godmothers. Uh, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then after the final blessing and dismissal, I'm going to lead you in some prayers um, uh, and then before we return to the sacristy. Uh, the Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. 
All glorious Prince St. Michael, chief and commander of the heavenly hosts, guardian of souls, vanquisher of rebel spirits, servant in the house of the divine king and our admirable conductor, you who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, deliver us from all evil, who turn to you with confidence and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. The prayer of abandonment, abandonment by Blessed Charles of Foucauld. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself. To surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence. For you are my Father. The prayers in time of epidemic. Vouchsafe to hear us, O God, our salvation, our only salvation, and through the intercession of the glorious and blessed Mary, Mother of God and ever Virgin, of thy blessed martyr Sebastian, and of all the saints, deliver thy people from the terrors of thy wrath, and restore their confidence by the outpouring of thy compassion. Be moved to pity, O Lord, at our earnest entreaties, and heal the illnesses of body and soul, so that experiencing thy forgiveness, we may ever rejoice in thy blessing. We beseech thee, O Lord, Grant us a hearing as we devoutly raise our petitions to thee, and graciously turn away the epidemic of plague which afflicts us, so that mortal hearts may recognize that these scourges proceed from thine indignation, and cease only when thou art moved to mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and evermore. Amen. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, qui ha que meruisti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Prosit. Er omnibus singulis. Deo gratias. Amen.